What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at testing and engineering for metal roof systems. We're gonna learn what it is, um, what's the difference between the terms testing and engineering, and who needs to know this information. And I've got Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Happy to be here, Thad. Tell me, what is metal roof testing when we hear those terms used in the industry? So it's literally exactly what it sounds like. It's the uh, it's a test performed on a roof panel to test for a specific requirement, whether it be uplifts, air infiltration, water penetration, water submersion. You know, there's tests on the physical properties of the panel uh, when it comes to materials. There's tests on how a panel profile performs. And then you also have tests on coatings, you know, your paint systems, your gavelum coatings, things like that. There is a, a physical property that you are looking to test, and it usually has guidelines of what is acceptable and what is not. And we hear the terms testing and engineering pretty much used interchangeably, but what do those actually mean? When you think of testing, think of the test being performed, right? Whether it's an uplift test. The outcome of the test involves the engineering portion. So that's where a professional engineer, a PE, would basically take the performance of how the panel or coating or whatever did that was run during the test and then puts that into something that's usable. So for uplift tests, you do an uplift test, a UL580, a UL1897, an ASTM 1592. Those are all uplift tests. The outcome of those tests is where the engineering gets involved. That tells you how high of a design pressure that you can meet. It also goes into use engineering the building design based on those design pressures. Some is just tests. It's either pass or fail. There's not really any engineering involved, but a lot of them do involve engineering or involve engineering based off the testing that is done. So you mentioned a few common tests, including uplift, um, water submersion, things like that. Tell me a little bit more about what we typically see throughout the industry. What's typically required? You know, what do you usually see when, when buildings have to go up? You know, what are those testing requirements? So for commercial buildings, common tests for panel performance is obviously one uplifts, right? They want to know how much it's going to take for that roof to blow off. Water penetration is the other big one, whether it be water penetration and submersion, depending on the slope of your building. But there's usually some type of water testing in there. Another one that's pretty common is air infiltration, how much air is going to be escaping through the panel system. Uh, they use that a lot when it comes to either, uh, you know, air barrier assemblies, things like that. And then you get into a lot of uh, the coating performances, you know, on painted systems. Uh, you have you know, humidity resistance, you have cyclic fog, you have abrasion resistance. That's usually pretty important when you're dealing in coastal environments because the salt can act as a sandpaper based, you know, the salt in the air can rub off paint if it's not tested for abrasion. Um, another, another big common one is ASTM E84, which is flame spread. You know, fire is a big one when it comes to metal roofing. Another real common one is impact resistance when it comes to hail. So there's, there's a lot of different tests that are available. Designing your building and the geographic location that it's in is going to usually dictate what tests are, are going to be applicable to the specific conditions of the job. And, you know, again, you know, the geographic location, whether, you know, it's uh, coastal, non-coastal, and the deck assembly, what it's being installed on. All these different tests when it comes to attachments, whether... You know, it's plywood, B deck, or B deck with ISO are all going to could perform differently. You know, water penetration is pretty simple. That has a lot to do with the panel seams. A lot of the water testing is tested over open framing, so it basically covers any type of decking. Because if you can test it over open framing and it doesn't leak, you're going to be even better off if you have a substrate underneath it with a with a underlayment. Specific to uh, uh, uplift tests, you know, deck attachments very important because. Your faster pull out in a half inch piece of plywood is going to be a lot different than it is into a 22 gauge B deck. So with all these different kinds of tests, you know, how do you know what you need for the project that you're working on at the at the current moment? Again, there there are some requirements when it comes to what type of test is being performed, right? So again, using uplift as an example, uh, UL 580 1897 is going to be for solid decks. 
right? If you have a solid deck on your roof that you're attaching to, whether it's plywood, B deck, B deck with ISO, and then you have ASTM E1592, which is strictly a structural open framing test. So based on the assembly uh, will really help dictate some of the tests that you need. Some tests are based only on panel profile, right? Like your um, ASTM 16, E1646, your water penetration testing. You know, that's going to be based on the panel configuration. It's usually tested over open framing to cover you over all substrates, you know, and then the paint tests or coating tests, those don't really matter at all what substrate it's being installed on. Uh, it's, it's tested on the coating period, so it doesn't have anything to do with any type of attachment. But who, who's the one telling me that I have to have a test, you know, if I'm installing a roof? It's usually the architect uh, on commercial projects. Um, the architects will sometimes consult with the uh, manufacturers. You know, we get calls from architects all the time to uh, check out building design and check out their specs. The reason they do that is to make sure that they're supplying the most applicable information for the panel system that uh, they want installed on their project. You know, as far as design goes, metal can't do everything when it comes down to it. There's, there's different materials that are suited for uh, different applications, right? You know, you're, you're doing something with a 0-12 pitch, you know, you're probably going to end up going to a flat roofing type system. So we'll look at different designs. We'll make sure that we're not having any dead valleys where water's gathering. Um, but usually the architect that, on commercial projects is going to be the one specifying what they're going to require for that particular building. And specs change, you know, not usually, two buildings aren't usually the same. You'll see common ones, like I said, uplift water penetration, but they might throw something in there for seismic resistance or, um, you know, have to meet a certain wind speed. It really, it really depends, but the architect's usually the one that's going to be making the calls as far as what's going to be required. So who actually does the tests? Who's, you know, responsible for performing those tests? Where do you get that engineering from? So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So the tests are performed by a third party certified laboratory based on the test that you're running. If you're running a UL 580 test, you have to run it through a lab that's accredited with UL. Uh, if you're running an ASTM test, you have to run it through a test that's accredited for ASTM testing. A lot of the coding uh, information, whether it's you know minimum requirements for the Gavalum coding or minimum requirements or the, for the uh, paint coatings, the suppliers of that usually do their own testing. Sherwin Williams, for example, has all their own testing for their paint systems because they want it, you know, to be able to use it as wide as possible. And that's the same thing that manufacturers like Sheffield Metals do. We go out and we test our panel profiles that we support to be able to provide all that information to the to the, to our customers, the roofing contractors. Roofing contractors can go out and get their own testing. You know, they can go to a lab and they can do their own testing and things like that. It is just a it's a pretty big upfront expense when it comes down to it. It's not one test will cover you for everything. Like I said, there's multiple tests for different deck assemblies. For certain requirements, uh, you know, say for Florida building code, you have to test three uplift assemblies to get an HVHD approval. So all those, all those costs keep stacking up when it comes to having multiple assemblies and multiple deck attachments and, and honestly in multiple materials, you know, you have to test it for steel, for aluminum, whatever the substrate you're testing in. That, that expense starts growing pretty rapidly, uh, especially depending on the offerings that you want to be able to, uh, to have. So if I'm your typical metal roofing installer and I have a roll forming machine, I'm going to want to look for my coil supplier to, to provide me with that, that testing information. I would, honestly, if, if engineering is going to be a necessity for your business, that would probably be the first thing I'd be looking at when it comes to checking out a coil supplier. You can have a coil supplier that, you know, has the colors you need, has great delivery service. If they don't have the engineering to back up that material, it's not going to do you much good, right? So you want to try to find, you got to find the unicorn. You got to find one that has both the testing and engineering that you're going to need, and you got to have one that's able to provide a quality material and a quality service for your business. And who needs to know this information? Is it the person that's running panels for another installer? Is it the person that's actually installing panels on the roof? So it, everybody should be involved in it because say you're just running panels, but you're not running, you're not installing it on the roof, right? 
it's your responsibility to make sure that that panel is role formed in tolerance of what was tested. Uh, when you go out and you test a panel profile, uh, say inch and three quarter, for example, the dimensions for that panel are listed on the engineering report. If that panel isn't role formed within those measurements, then it's not applicable. It's not it's because it's it's not the same as what was tested, right? The installer definitely needs to know uh, if they're running their own panels. That's one more thing they have to add onto their list of things to check. If they're not running the panels, they still need to know that information in order to accept the panels from the people that are running it, right? And then they're going to have to know how it's attached. There's a certain fastener that's used for attachment. There's a certain clip spacing that's used for attachment. If a panel's tested at, say, a 24-inch clip spacing, and they go up and they install it at 30 inches on center, that's those don't meet up, right? So it's important for everybody to know what the building requirements are and how to achieve them before those panels ever touch the roof. Why is engineering important? Why go through all this trouble to test and then install in that way? So metal roofing is a significant investment, number one. You know, it's, it is not the low end material when it comes to getting your roof done. You know, number two, you know, we taught metal roofing as a, a lifetime metal roof, you know, long term, 60 plus years. That's only the, the material can last that long, but then it comes down to how it's installed. So you have a material that has a long lifespan. You have to make sure that your installation can also hold up to that long lifespan. And you want to make sure you know how it's going to perform, you know, especially in areas where you get high winds or things like that. So having those that, that engineering and that testing done, I have a pretty good amount of certainty that it's going to be able to handle the requirements in my geographic location and building design if, if you know, I install it this way. And the engineering I have can meet the requirements for my area. So if you look at Sheffield Metals as an example, you know, on the Sheffield website, you have engineered and non-engineered panel profiles. You know, what are the differences there and what makes one set engineered? What we call an engineered system at Sheffield is basically something that we have a gambit of testing on, right? We have uplift testing, water testing, air testing, impact testing, fire ratings. We basically have everything that we feel we would need to be competitive or meet a commercial specification. Non-engineered panels, usually our residential panels, are on the non-engineered side. But that doesn't mean that they don't have any testing. But we do have some panel profiles that are tested for uplifts because, again, metal roofing is a big investment. Homeowners live in areas subject to high wind. So some of the more popular uh, panel profiles that are used in residential, we did go out and we did test for uplifts. We do have the impact testing on. We do have the fire ratings on. They can work with their contractors, make sure that they're having a roof that's installed per some type of uplift testing, uh, you know, a clip spacing. You have some checks and balances for when your residential products projects get installed. Cool. Well, thanks, Jeff, for the information. We have tons of content on engineering, testing, panel profiles on the Metal Roofing channel, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. Comment down below with any questions. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.